Okay, go. Oh, well, now what I'm going to do is cheating because I'm spinning the branch. Now, obviously, if it's on the tree, you're not going to be able to do it this easily. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to grab pliers. I remember this one. This is where, in the video, Roger says, if you have any aggression towards your trees, this is where you show it. Actually, this just spun right off. So you have something like that. Now again, what Roger did was he cut a couple of slots. I don't know, I think he only did two. Probably wouldn't hurt to do three. Then you take your rooting hormone, which pretend this is rooting hormone, and um, he used dip and grow, and he went around this part only. You don't want any roots down there. You also, on the tree that, on the sample that Roger did, which was, I think, a longan, he had to take his knife and go back and forth to get a lot of debris. This bark was slipping very easily, so you can see this just peeled right off. Mm -hmm. So you might want to scratch this up. Um, well, you gotta, you gotta, if you need to, to you want to get it all, because you don't want the tree to self-heal. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't really want to ruin this piece. Yeah, no, no. But what you do, uh, again, Roger used 100% peat moss and, well, all peat moss, but he said about 10% vermiculite. I just grabbed a handful. Uh, you'll take your knife, you'll cut it like so, you'll then wrap it, and then what, pretend that this is in Pushed the side, in further. and then you just start tying. I'm going to wrap from this end to make it easier. And I'm not wrapping very tight right now. I, I'm just trying to show you the Yeah, idea. normally it'd be tighter. It would be tight enough that you don't, um, you know, let it let it come come loose. Then, the, the, I'm going to say the second to the last step. And of course, I have reused, I mean, this has been used once before. You'll you'll wrap it and cover it from light. Mm -hmm. Roger also said if you have a problem with crows, because crows may come and peck mm -hmm. and shred it, he would wrap uh, an old t-shirt mm -hmm. to keep it from being reflective. Yeah. Um, two to six months, well in fact some things take a, up to a year before roots form. Mm -hmm. Now this is step one. Step two is where you end up with something like this. Now of course this one's dead and all dry. You have to very carefully remove the string, very carefully remove as much of the plastic, but you want to be super careful removing that. Roger's um, instructions said take this and put it in a pot of water for a couple hours. I have found better success if I don't do that, if we pop, if we take this as is, the the water makes the roots even more fragile. Mm. That if you stick this in your pot, and then just give it, you know, you you soak it, but you keep it very very moist and shaded. Mm -hmm. At Norm's house, we potted up. Well, actually, I had taken ten air layers off of my tree. And I just cut them, threw them in the car, and took them to Norm's. And we potted them up there. 
and he put them in the shade and 10 out of 10 are surviving. Mm -hmm. Now again, with the fragility of the roots, um, I, I would say it's going to take at least a year, if not longer, to have a tree that we can On here, not damaging that because do you think roots might grow out of that? Well, again, with the, the variety that Roger, I mean, this bark was slipping so easily, this just kind of peeled off. Roger had to kind of grind it off, and he took his knife and he went back and forth. But that's only if the bark doesn't come off easy. Right, right. Like this one was, it jumped off practically. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he just used pliers to twist and you, you can get a nice clean edge. Okay. Um, covering it with the, the aluminum foil kept it dark and I guess that helps promote root growth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, I liked the way Roger prepared the, the bag. Mm -hmm. um, he said use like a, a four by six bag. I happened to find, uh, I had to go on a hunt. And so I found these bags at Smart and Final, mm -hmm. uh, four by two by 12. Um, he also Sissel Twine, can't remember where I got it, whether Harbor it was. Freight. Possibly. Because then that's their brand. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I so I got the, Oh, no, this is Walmart. Oh. Hmm. So I guess I got this at Walmart. Okay, Walmart. Um, this wasn't very expensive, three or four dollars, I think, probably three or four dollars. Again, I don't recall the cost. On the twine, I just happened to get an approximately six foot piece. Mm -hmm. I think if I extend from end to end, that's about six feet. Um, I just tied, a, I think, a square knot. You could probably double it over and tie it again if you wanted to be more secure. But as you wrap it around, you, you know, you can, you can get a pretty good number of wraps and, and keep enough here as a leader to let you tie. Okay. I like this technique better than the baggies, the Ziplocs. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, the Ziplocs. Oh, the other thing Roger said is you want this to be w wet enough. You don't want it too wet, too dry. When you squeeze it, you get a little bit of water dripping out. If you get a ton of water, it's, you, you know, just squeeze it and squeeze it. Yeah. To, uh, so if you're going to do one today at 2 o'clock, you have one ready. Okay. If you choose a tree. Okay, cool.